everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Tracy Melshore. I'm a senior correspondent for eTalk. And I'd like to welcome you to Cami's first ever digital panel. You know, we are in some very surreal and uh, interesting times right now. Uh, so we just wanted to get together and have a real meaningful conversation and uh, brainstorm about mental health. And we wanted to encourage other Canadians to do the same. So while you all get settled and we all get uh, tucked in to have our conversation, I just have some housekeeping to do. I encourage all of you to everybody who's not a panelist, so that's uh, John Florence or myself, uh, <laughs> to uh, keep your mo microphones and your videos turned off. And near the end, we're gonna run through some questions that we've received over the past uh, few days. Now, I have a, a, a bit of a history with Cami. Two years ago, I was honored to um, be a champion of mental health in the media category. And it was uh, one of those nights that you just um, hold in your heart. And uh, it was uh, a beautiful uh, night. Not, I mean, yes, I was thankful and, and grateful to be honored, but just to be able to uh, talk to other people that are, um, whether they were struggling with their mental health or involved in volunteerism or in the government uh, aspect of uh, really buckling down and having encouraging conversations about mental health and erasing the stigma so it really is just a beautiful um evening and like many of us i was looking forward to going to the gala actually right this week tonight um so each year cami recognizes seven uh, incredible canadians uh, who has advanced the mental health agenda across the country coast to coast now these remarkable individuals they're nominated by their peers uh, their colleagues and community members and are recognized at the gala. But of course, COVID-19 and efforts to mitigate the spread of the virus has made it poss impossible for us to physically be together. So here we are today. Um, but it has made me happy, even though we are physically uh, separated, that so many people are, so many Canadians are really going above and beyond to maintain and respect social distancing guidelines. And I'm really pleased today and honored to be here to discuss, you know, really important mental health issues virtually. I mean, this is where we are right now. It's the reality we're in. And discuss the importance of paying attention to one's own mental health and practicing self-care while, of course, staying fabulous. Now, even inside, we can do this in, inside of our homes. So thank you, everyone who is tuning in right now. But before I'm going on and on and on, before I go any further, I would like to give each of our panelists an opportunity to introduce themselves. I'm joined by Florence Button, CAMI co-chair, and I'm also joined by John Ogranichek, the founder of Heads Up Guys, which is a free online resource that works to prevent male suicide. Also, uh, they open up conversations surrounding depression in men and really provide helpful tools for those who are struggling. And I'm pleased to announce that Heads Up Guys is the 2020 Champion of Mental Health Award recipient for the community category. Congratulations on receiving that honor, John. Great. Thanks very much. It, it truly is an honor and a privilege. I really feel like with heads, with heads Up Guys, you were a bit ahead of the curve when you're having these conversations with people virtually. Could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, we certainly didn't anticipate this, but uh, it's certainly helpful uh, that five years ago, we decided to have a presence uh, in virtual space. Uh, although we're centered here at uh, UBC in Vancouver, we're actually turning into a, a global uh, resource where we're serving not only uh, Canadians, but uh, English speaking people throughout the globe. And Florence, I'd like to open up the floor to you to introduce yourself and, and talk to us about your background and your connection to mental health. Hi, Tracy. Hi, John. Hi. Um, hi. hi from Newfoundland. Um, <laughs> I began my nursing career over 30 years ago in mental health here in the St. John's, Newfoundland. And um, at that time, I became involved with the Schizophrenia Society of Newfoundland Labrador and involved with a professional group who was doing family education. And then sort of that morphed into my involvement then with the Schizophrenia Society of Canada. Um, 
and then I was involved with the Canadian Federation of Mental Health Nurses um, as their president, which I'm now past president. And I'm still involved with the Schizophrenia Society of Canada as their past president and foundation board chair. But right now, my role here today is as co-chair for the Canadian Alliance for Mental Illness and Mental Health. I'm a nursing instructor here in St. John's at the Center for Nursing Studies. So I'm very proud of being able to assist uh, with the education of, of nurses. And currently I'm redeployed working in clinical education in long-term care during um, COVID-19. Okay, Florence, we're, we're, I mean, you're so uh, qualified and, and you know, really um, understanding what is going on here and how maybe how people are reacting to it, even though it's unprecedented times. So we're seven, eight weeks into this quarantine, you know, different parts of the country, obviously, there are different um, lockdown rules and regulations. But what are, what are the, some of the biggest things that you're seeing right now in terms of mental health when it comes to people you're talking to? I, I think right now, as we get longer into it, I, I understand that people are feeling a lot of stress and anxiety, um, a lot of uncertainty, especially um, in terms of uh, their jobs, financial situations, emotional situations, wondering, um, trying to be teachers for their children and work at home, which is very stressful, take care of their uh, parents, who may be seniors, and make sure that they're okay, while at the same time trying to manage their own mental health. So mm -hmm. one of the things I just want to say to people that it's normal that we're all feeling some stress and anxiety right now because of the uncertainty, but that you're not alone. Um, even though we're physically distancing, we are socially able to connect and that's extremely important. Um, the one thing I would say to people is if you are already living with a mental health issue or mental illness and you feel like things are getting worse, that you need to reach out to all the resources that are out there and find a way to get help. Mm -hmm. And what I would say to everyone out there is that everyone in Canada right now is struggling in some way with their mental health. And that if we reach out to each other, we can provide that support. So just checking in on people, letting them know they're not alone, that they're not isolated, I think is really important during this time. Absolutely. And John, we spoke about Heads Up Guys, but can you, um, like, could we take a step back and uh, introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your background and your connection to mental health in addition to the Heads Up Guys? Sure. Uh, I'm a professor of psychiatry at UBC, and I'm the director of the psychotherapy program here, which is one of the largest in North America. I also have a private practice and been working with people, uh, a lot of men, uh, for nearly 25 years now. And uh, on the academic aspect as well, uh, a colleague here at UBC, John Olaf, and I, more than a decade ago, started Canada's first men's mental health research program. So I have my fingers in lots of pots. Mm -hmm. And so when we talk about men and mental health, what, what, are we, what are you focusing on and then what are we seeing right now in, during this pandemic? Well, Heads Up Guys specifically is focused on depression and suicide amongst men. Uh, we know that traditionally men have not had very high rates of diagnoses of depression. That doesn't mean they're not depressed. It often means that they don't go to the doctor and get the diagnoses. And also sometimes depression looks a little different in guys. Uh, it can be irritable, angry, uh, so forth, which doesn't fall within the, the diagnostic criteria for depression. We also know that guys don't have very great help-seeking rates. When mm -hmm. they are struggling with something, they tend to go it alone, and sometimes that overwhelms their capacity to function and, and live, live well. And sadly, for a lot of guys, they end up taking their life because they see no other way out of their pain. And in the current context of the pandemic, we're, we're seeing a lot of activity around uh, the service that we offer excuse me, that we offer uh, with regard to guys feeling depressed, struggling with thoughts of suicide. But there's other issues. Loneliness is actually really, really common amongst guys and even more so right now, even though, uh, you know, I'm really glad to hear Flo say it's really important for us to connect. 
uh, social distancing doesn't have to mean social isolation, but for a lot of people, that's what they end up feeling. And, and also another big thing is meaning in life. Without us working right now, a lot of people do have their sense of self wrapped around what they do for their job, for their employment. And when that's taken away, some of their purpose really is taken away. So that really confronts people with a, an immense existential challenge, really. Do you think even, I mean, I know it's Mental Health Week and, uh, you know, a lot of talk about people and their mental health. Do you think with um, this pandemic that people are feeling a little bit more open about talking about what's going on with them? Because the conversation seems to be everywhere. Yeah, you're right. The conversation is everywhere. And I'm really glad that that's happening. Mm -hmm. You know, sadly, it took a pandemic for that to happen, but we'll take it. Uh, mm-hmm. So the, those conversations are opening up. People are uh, more willing to disclose, not easily for some people, and still others still really have struggles. And so uh, it is important to check in with people. And you know, a, an explicit question, "How you doing?" Uh, is one way. But if people seem reluctant to to open up and share, or if they give sort of that. Uh, oh, I'm fine, everything's mm-hmm. good kind of response when you suspect it might not be the case. Uh, another way to open up an avenue of conversation is perhaps share what's going on with you. And so that kind of gives them permission to, to share with you as well. That's good. That's really, really great advice. Flo, can you add on to that? No, I totally agree that um, with what John's saying that we need to open up the conversation and I'm really glad that we're talking more about mental health. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we just need to let people know that it's okay not to be okay. Um, We need to let people know that as much as we're washing our hands and hand washing is so vitally important right now, um, we need to treat mental health like we treat hand washing and take care of ourselves. I think, you know, letting people know that self-care, like a colleague told me the other day, is not really selfish. It's actually really required right now for us to build resilience and to recover from what's happening and checking in on people and just saying, you know, I'm feeling this way. I'm not sure how you're feeling. And, you know, if you're not ready to talk about it yet, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm present. I'm going to listen and just to actively listen to people. And I think all the compassion and kindness that we're seeing across the country is really important right now, because I think, you know, showing compassion uh, creates happiness in others, but it also creates happiness within ourselves. And like John said, finding a sense of purpose. So, you know, doing something during the day that gives you joy, that makes you happy, that helps you smile, whether it's to go for a walk or FaceTime a friend or be creative, listen to music, well, you know, sit with your pet, you know, whatever Mm -hmm. works for you, find what works for you because there's, you know, you're a unique person and you need to find what works for you. You do. And, you know, I I have these conversations with my, my, my friends and, and my colleagues and, you know, you can hear sometimes the guilt because, you know, the homeschooling isn't going perfectly or, um, maybe had to wait in line for two hours for the groceries and that stirred up some type, you know, some anxiety. Like there's all these different um, things coming from different directions. And then they're saying, I don't have time to self care. You know, like I don't like, I have all of these things. And then maybe when I try and go to sleep at night, my mind is, is still going. So how do, how do we figure those things out? I think, what you have to recognize in yourself is take a step back for a moment and sort of, you know, see what's working for you. Sometimes that's as simple as maybe writing it down in a journal. A lot of people are keeping COVID-19 journals now to help them sort of sort through what's happening and to find out, you know, what they can do differently. But I think we have to be kinder and more compassionate with ourselves and give ourselves a break. And you know what? Um, You'll be uh, better for it and your families and your loved ones will be better if you do take that 15 minutes to self-care um, you know make sure you're getting enough rest get your nutrition but you know mm-hmm. find something that gives you joy and if I have one other kind of thing I would say to people is um, 
one of the things I treasure most is the ability to laugh. And I think yeah. laughter right now, we need to find ways to laugh. And I come from a province where, you know, laughter is one of the greatest joys, that music. So, you know, find laughter in your life, find joy in your day and recognize that you're doing the best you can do, that nobody is perfect. No one is going to be perfect because none of us have ever faced before, but that you're not alone, that we're all in this together. And that's really important. I've had, really important. I've had many joyful nights at kitchen parties in Newfoundland, so I totally agree. And we can still do those virtually. Yes, and I think that's a great idea. You know, um, I like the idea of doing things virtually. I know I have friends who get together on Friday nights and uh, talk and just have like a virtual party and keep connected that way. Um, sometimes it's just nice to go for a walk or even go for a drive and just have a look at the scenery and treasure what we have right now. I think that's the other thing. Uh, gratitude is really important as well. And I know people are really struggling and they're probably saying, you know, that's really hard for me. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, there are resources out there that they can find and use. And if you know someone or if you see someone who's struggling, you know, reach out, um, help out in any way you can with, with a mental health organization. Maybe it's volunteer kids help phone or a mental health crisis line or a warm line. But that may be helpful too if you're looking to reach out to people. John, when we were, thanks Flo, thanks Lawrence. Uh, when we were talking about Heads Up Guys and, and the original mandate, uh, you know, um, preventing uh, male suicide and dealing with depression in men, obviously with COVID-19, uh, the, the, the mandate has had to grow and evolve to encompass this pandemic. So could you talk to us a little bit about how, how it has evolved and how it's changed in the last seven, eight weeks? Yeah, you're absolutely right. We did have to switch gears because we didn't anticipate uh, what we're experiencing right now. And we had to be relevant to the people that we serve and in doing so had to respond to the challenges that people are really, really struggling with uh, right now during this pandemic. And so uh, we created a COVID-19 hub uh, for Heads Up Guys where we consolidate a lot of blogs, advice, uh, um, articles around dealing with how to work from home, how to manage stress, how to help uh, a mate if he's not doing so well, and then uh, consolidating also uh, useful links uh, to outside resources because a lot of time and effort and energy and resource has been marshaled to help serve people in many different ways across provinces and nations. And we try to bring some of those together to help people. So if you've been laid off from your job, what are some mechanisms that are in place where you live that might offer financial support? If you need to reach out because you're really struggling, where are some crisis lines that you can call? So we bring some of that stuff together and, and try to be a part of people's journey in managing what we're going through right now. You know, a, a lot of insecurity, financial insecurity, food insecurity, job, you know, home. Uh, so when you're when you're trying to deal with that, that's one thing when you're in the position of being the employee or the former employee. But what is what kind of messages do you have to the people who are employers? Be kind. Be empathetic. Uh, you know, as we've all of us have said, we're all struggling in our own ways. We're living in a very imperfect world right now. Mm -hmm. So some of the expectations that you may have of employees in the past when things were normal don't necessarily apply right now because we're not li living in a normal world. And that flexibility is really needed. And, uh, you know, there is a mention of, people looking after their kids, trying to homeschool their kids, always being present for them. And that's really, really hard. So you need to, as an employer, recognize that some of your employees may be in that position and essentially need to <laughs> cut some, some slack. Yeah. And I feel it's important for people to, you know, be able to express themselves. But again, that's part of the whole the cycle, right? 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Flo, um, you know, we've been talking about uh, so many amazing stories of kindness and compassion on the news. You know, that a lot of news programs are doing a good news, you know, of the day. And we see people line dancing in their neighborhoods and, and six feet away from each other and people helping out uh, uh, those in need or um, people that are older than us. So any stories right now that stand out to you, Florence? Well, as a nurse, one of the greatest stories that stands out to me is how thankful uh, people have been for the nurses and the healthcare workers, the first responders and the essential workers and all the cheering and the, the and you know, standing on their balconies mm -hmm. or, or playing music. And it's just the joy of seeing people coming together or, you know, when you look online and you see like chalk drawings in people's driveways saying thank you and rainbows in everyone's windows. And I think the compassion and the kindness that's out there is really important. And I think, you know, one of the things that kind of stands out to me, I was thinking today um, with Canada, and we had the musical tribute for Food Bank Canada um, mm -hmm. a few weeks ago. And the song Lean On Me. And I, and I kept thinking today that that truly is a Canadian anthem because we do lean on each other from coast to coast and through the territories. So I think it's really important that those things are, we're watching kids, you know, um, do different things to raise money or get, you know, PPE for people and, you know, companies giving PPE or donating funds. It's just, it's, it's, it's wonderful to see the joy and the kindness out there. It really is. It just, it just fills your heart. John, any stories? I mean, there's so many that stand out for you. Well, to reiterate what Flo is saying is the caring and kindness that you see in just simple, mundane, everyday interactions, if you will. Uh, I think people are, are, you know, very aware that we are all in this together, you know, experience it in different ways, but nonetheless, we're in it together and just acknowledging that with one another. You know, my own community, we do the seven o'clock cheer and everyone kind of loiters on their front step. I live in a townhouse complex and there's apartments all around. And so we have these distance conversations with everyone, some acknowledging nods to people across the street where you can't talk to them. Uh, somebody in the community dresses up in a T-Rex outfit and runs up <laughs> down the street, uh, bang pots. And so <laughs> there's music that comes. And I think everyone is trying to make the best of it. And, and you know, Floyd mentioned laughter. Laughter is so important to just do silly things and, and just share. Uh, you know, it, there are some silver linings in this, if you will, that people are connecting in different ways, uh, sharing kindness, uh, and that's really important to acknowledge and embrace as we're going through this. And there, I mean, just you telling me about the T-Rex costume made me laugh out loud, like literally. <laughs> 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 Look up Rain City Rexy, you'll see. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. You know, um, this is Mental Health Week, you know, and of course, you know, we're, we're reducing the, the stigma of mental illness and um, promoting good mental health for all Canadians and uh, all around and with this chat. And uh, when I was watching direct Dr. Teresa Tam today, you know, she made mention of this year's theme, the hashtag get real theme. So it's such an important message to focus on. So, Flo, when we say hashtag get real in conjunction with the uh, with Mental Health Week, what what is the what is what is the thought process behind that? I think it's just um, to have people recognize that we can be honest with our feelings and we can actually say how we're feeling. And when someone asks you, "How are you doing?" Most people they say about sixty-seven to seventy percent of people will say, "I'm fine." Mm. When actually, what they mean is, "I didn't sleep very well last night. I'm feeling really stressed. I'm worried financially." I'm worried because my mom, I can't visit her and she's a senior and I don't know what to do or my children are struggling at home. Um, but now with that, it's saying, you know, we need to say those things um, because getting things out and just venting things can actually be very cathartic for people and just help them to feel that, you know, they're not alone. And when you say that, most people will go, yeah, I understand. I'm feeling the exact same way and this is what's going on with me. So it's, it starts a conversation 
So I think get real means we just need to be honest and open and try to talk about mental health and support everyone's mental health. I think that's what get real is all about. And it's about connections, making connections because human connection is so extremely important. It's what gives us our purpose, helps us with our self-esteem, our growth. Um, so that's the other thing they want to create this week. Even though we're in um, a physical distancing world, we're not meant to be in a world where we're not able to connect. So connect with people because human connection is, is one of the most important things for people because, you know, we're not an island. We don't live alone, you know, we don't live in this world alone and we need to make mm -hmm. that connection with people. So I'm going to address this to uh, both of you. So if somebody is struggling right now, you know, struggling right now, what do you suggest they do right at this moment? Uh, John, I'll let you go first. Don't go it alone. You know, you need to share. That's one of the most important things about us having these conversations about mental health right now is that uh, if you are struggling, somebody else probably uh, is struggling just the same, or if not, they can certainly have empathy and compassion for what you're going through. And you do need people uh, around you. You know, I, I can't emphasize that enough, what Flo was talking about. You know, human beings are social animals. We, we need to be connected to others, and especially in times of hardship. If you're having a hard time, reach out. There is help and support, and uh, it's, you know, it's really important to not feel alone in your struggles. And the only way to not have that happen is to let people know. Thank you. Flo? I think that, you know, we need to keep the conversation going and letting people know that they're not alone, that they're not in this alone, and that we are all stronger together. And that it's okay to talk to people. It's okay to reach out. That there are a lot of different resources out there. Um, all the different provinces have different resources. The Mental Health Commission has resources in their COVID hub with modules you can do. Um, we have Wellness Canada. Um, you know those kinds of things. And if you don't have access to the internet, you know, and but you do have a phone, call somebody. Or if you're somebody who knows somebody who is socially isolated, call them. And if they don't have a phone, but you can go knock on their door and then walk to the end of their driveway, you can still have a conversation mm -hmm. and say, hi, I'm thinking about you. Um, kindness matters. You need to help people to feel that they matter. And I think that's, that's what's really important right now is just letting everyone know that we all matter in this and that everyone um, deserves to be supported and helped. You know, I, they, we, it's so true. And uh, I, I remember um, talking to one of my girlfriends once and she was having a struggle and I, you know, and she talked to me the next day. She goes, I just phoned the kids help phone. She goes, I didn't know what to do. And they helped me out and they, they sent me to different resources. I thought, that's great. You know, like wherever you reach out, whoever you reach out to, they're going to be able to find you in another direction to get you some support. Yes. So it was just a really interesting story. You know, we're, um, we've seen various uh, governments across the country uh, dedicate funding and resources to mental health during this time. And uh, like I said, Dr. Teresa Tam was talking about hashtag get real during her press conference today. Uh, Flo, are there any announcements that stood out to you? And is there anything more that you think that should be done, you know, long term, short term? I think the federal government's funding for mental health has certainly increased. And even on Sunday with the $240.5 billion that's going to virtual health care and mental health services is absolutely amazing. I think this helps us to recognize um, in this time that mental health um, must be treated the same way in terms of funding and supports and services as uh, physical health. So I think we need to create mental health parity. And I, and I don't think we can stop now. I think this has given us an opportunity to uh, look at what we can do in terms of mental health promotion, um, mental illness prevention, and putting money into that within mental health research, um, you know, more money into research to find uh, what therapies work and what medications may work or what social supports. And I think that's another key. We need to make sure that we're putting enough money into social supports across the country mm -hmm. for people. 
because you know we need to make sure too that populations that are marginalized like uh, people who are homeless or living with severe struggles or within our you know uh, domestic violence situation our indigenous populations that we're also looking after them and our you know all our healthcare workers and our first responders because you know the concern is that this could turn into a mental health pandemic at the end of it but if we're if the government continues to put money into funding and mental health promotion and illness prevention now um, we can be way ahead of the curve and I think we already are with the monies that they put into things like virtual care uh, support for things like the kids help phone and other resources and all the provinces are doing a great job at it as well mm -hmm. glad you mentioned you know so many different communities and demographics and people in different situations because it is not just a blanket fix for everybody. It's no. as many different fixes as there are people in, across our country. So John, any particular um, announcements that have stood out for you? Well, just to build off of what Flo was saying is that, you know, across the nation, provinces and even communities, there's so much that people are trying to do to help. And this pandemic's really been a shot in the arm, helping bring mental health out of the shadows and health parity, as Flo was saying, is really important. Mm -hmm. You know, if we were talking about diabetes or cancer or, or heart disease, people don't bat an eye talking about that. But when we're talking about mental health issues, it's like, where do we go with that? And so this is a good start. And while some of the resources and supports that have been put into place to deal with the struggles around the pandemic, uh, it, it really is only a beginning. As you said, it's, you know, different strokes for different folks. We really need mm -hmm. to build out, starting from here, new services and supports for people and to not let this momentum dissipate when once the pandemic's over. So true. I mean, I know, you know, even people want to be, um, you know, after, like, talk to people who've come from, you know, the same backstory as them or a similar culture. You know, there's, there's sometimes that, you know, there, there needs to be that understanding, too, when it comes to taking care of your mental health. Yeah, and absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, Flo. Yeah. No, you go ahead. I was just going to say, yes, definitely. We need culturally safe supports as well um, for, for all people. And we need to understand that everyone may need something different and something different works for different people, you know. So I think we have to have a broad range of resources out there. Absolutely. Okay, I think we have we have some questions that we were emailed into us. So, uh, John, Flo, um, this one during COVID nineteen, many mental professionals, mental health professionals, are unable to resume regular activities like seeing clients. As a result, many people are struggling. So, what are some of what are some resources for those struggling with their mental health who are unable to go see a therapist or counselor? I know for me, I'm seeing all my clients virtually either on the telephone or, or through video. Uh, so, and all of my colleagues are doing the same. So it's really important to check in. You know, if you did have uh, a therapist and, you know, you can't go see your therapist, to make sure that you're still having uh, connection and communication with that person through these other mechanisms. It's never going to replace face mm -hmm interactions so we need to be mindful of that and and sort of moderate our expectations uh, around that but but there are mechanisms in place in BC for example the the College of Psych psychologists are offering one-off uh, consultation sessions for people uh, it's free uh, you can phone as many times as you want you won't get the same person necessarily but but supports are being put into place and, and to make use of those that's great Hello? um there's a lot of different resources and supports out there and as john said um you know the virtual ability to check in with people it's great the canadian psychological association has um they're offering free support through therapists um you know, there's, you can get kind of the behavioral therapy online. There's resources out there that you can check in with. There's, um, you know, warm lines, which is just basically a peer support type of thing. We have one here in Newfoundland with Channel. Um, mm. You know, your mental health crisis line. Um, you know, Kids Help Phone has the ability now where you can just 
text, and there's even one there where you can, healthcare workers can text. And most of the provinces have different resources and different apps. I know here in Newfoundland, we have like Bridge the Gap app and the Federal Government the Wellness Canada app that they have. And um, it's just sort of, you know, and it can be something just as simple as just talking to your friend or loved one about how you're feeling and, um, you know, or just checking in with somebody, you know, it can be that kind of simple. Mm -hmm is the time this is the time i'm having a, you know i'm sure like a lot of people are having a lot of interesting open very candid conversations and nobody's batting an eyelash you know it's like you talk and talk it's like okay gotta go make dinner you know like it's just no no stigma no, no mm -hmm. nothing attached to it just just real conversations which is, which is such a lovely and it's such a place to be that it just makes you feel light you know it takes the burden off takes some of the burden off uh, our last question we got emailed in, um, what are some ways that somebody can support organizations that are providing mental health support to Canadians? People want to get involved. So what are some of the ways they can get involved to help? Well, you can get involved in your communities through community organizations and reaching out to like probably mental health organizations in your community. Um, and just seeing what they might need. Um, it might be something as simple as, you know, a donation. Uh, it might be, you know, uh, helping to deliver food to people. It could, there's a lot of different ways they can do it. Um, you could become a volunteer with a crisis line or a peer support line or with Kids Help Phone. They're always looking for volunteers where you can reach out to national organizations and just see what they might need and what they have to offer um so there's a lot of different ways you just need to find what works for you right now mm -hmm. and um you know even you know just the simplest thing is just googling and just sort of seeing what might be needed out there across the country or in your own community is really important and you know um check on your neighbor check on the you know the person who's living alone um Check on your colleague and see if they're doing okay at home. Beyond the, you know, the Zoom meeting that we're having to discuss mm -hmm. something that's work-related. You know, maybe just give them a call and say, you know, hi, I saw you on the meeting today and I'm wondering how you're doing. Really good advice. I, I find that I'm having a lot more heart-to-heart -heart conversations with my colleagues, you know, because we're not physically in the same place every day. Yeah, and Flo, Flo offers some really good advice there. And, you know, just check in with whatever organization you're interested in and, and ask them how you might be able to help. You know, the physical help may be available uh, or may be available to you as an option if you're delivering food or something like that. Uh, or, you know, a lot of uh, community organizations are are non-profit and re rely really heavily like we do at Heads Up Guys on donations from the public. So that is an important way that you can contribute. And sharing resources, maybe you don't necessarily need them, but others in your social network do. So one great way that you can help out is simply raise awareness of the availability of these resources. Great, great, great tips. John, congratulations once again, Laura. Thank, thank you for for joining us. And you know, I encourage all of you out there to not only get real during Mental Health Week, but uh, all year around. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, it was my honor to be to be part of uh, Cami's first ever virtual panel. Thanks, thank Tracy. You so much, John. Thanks so much, Tracy. Take care, John. Have a great day. Thank you you bye too. Bye bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>